I want to greet you this morning and uh, share with you a little story. The gospel has reminded me. When I was uh, little, my family also experienced the loss of my little sister who was three years old. She ventured into the streets and she got lost. We didn't know. After realizing she was not at home, the strategy was going about three or four blocks from home to different directions to find her. But we didn't succeed. My brother, though, went to a park, a park we never visited. The girl was there, sitting and trembling, not knowing what to do. I still remember this 90 minutes of scare, of anxiety. But 90 minutes are nothing compared to the three days of, of suspension Mary and just, Joseph lived out looking by their boy. Great anxiety is what Mary shares in the text. She and Joseph were looking for the boy in all possible places during these three intense and long days. They perhaps were not able to eat and sleep well. And surely they have passed nearby the temple but didn't manage to go closer. How they could know that this was the time when the angel annunciation, God will make him a king of the descendants of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end, was almost to take place. And moreover, like many other parents, they were not yet conscious how much Jesus was growing. At the end, he was only their boy. Their boy. Both parents have not seen Jesus' theological in inclination before. For them, Jesus was a boy doing things at home, working well, accompanying them for 12 years to Jerusalem. Of course, they were amazed when Jesus was uh, presented in the temple because Simeon recognized the little boy as the promise, promised Messiah, the salvation for all people, a light to reveal God's will to the Gentiles, the one bringing glory to Israel. And that same day, the prophet, prophet Anna confirmed that Jesus was the awaited one who will set Jerusalem free. Both parents were happy with this good news. This message was amazing them. But at this point in their lives, they were not ready for the prophecies to become true. That is the reason why Mary asks Jesus right after finding him, son, why have you done this to us? Through this question, Mary expresses that that human reality both parents are living, one of deep tension and confrontation. In the middle of the confusion and loss of their child, another clash takes place. A dry answer comes from Jesus explaining his obligation to be at the, in, his, in his father's house. This was a complete new reality for Joseph and Mary. Now they were almost glimpsing with pain the meaning of the prophecies and the way God was entering upon the scene through Jesus. But both Mary and Joseph were part of this faithful community waiting for the Messiah. They didn't understand, understand, though, all the signs this unique moment was providing, not only to them, but also 
to the ones listening and talking to Jesus. As a firstborn male, Jesus was dedicated in the temple, which means that he was given to God. It is possible that it happened with many families. Mary and Joseph, Joseph accomplished the instructions in the law of Moses through a ceremony that was not only customary and a customary practice. They knew about the engagement to keep this promise of giving this child to God. But for Mary, the promise links beyond to this. God favors Mary to bring the Son of God and name him as Jesus, a child born among ordinary people. Here we have a different experience than the one lived by Hannah and Elkanah in 2 Samuel. Hannah, after being scorned, prays fervently to God asking for a child. The temple's context at that time is very complex. Eli's household is corrupted, and he is not able to limit the weakness of his own sons that continuously take advantage of faithful people. God, breaking upon that reality, responds to Hannah's prayer with a child named Samuel that is dedicated to God and entrusted to Eli to serve God. This child is a gift of God. And once a year, Hannah and Elkanah go to the temple for the annual sacrifice, bringing a liner robe, a liturgical or priestly garment. In that context, Samuel becomes the child of transition between the times of judges to the times of kings. That powerless child is about to bring a radical shift in power and political structure in Israel. With Jesus, a new change in the religious and socio-political spheres is almost to happen in Jerusalem. It is through the child that God offers to the authorities of that time the opportunity to change their behavior in order to govern with justice and peace. By staying behind at the temple, Jesus asks and responds questions and is able to amaze many, including these religious leaders. They are astonished because they are starting to experience a sort of unexpected good news. Many of them are not yet ready for this moment, though. The anxiety of Jesus' parents and the surprise of those talking and listening to Jesus reveal the struggle to accept that moment God is entering into history through actions. A moment that is significantly to open hearts and minds towards change. Different than Samuel, Jesus was entrusted to Mary for care and nurture. After the experience in the temple, both parents start to see the new image of their child. Jesus, of course, con continues to be vul vulnerable as many children in that time, because children did not have rights. And God comes and acts, acts through a children. This particular moment was like a bottle for Mary and Joseph, a kind of bottle that is unplanned and kind of random. Today, as distant readers, we can value the relevance of God among us. 
self-incarnated in a vulnerable child. God invites people to walk in life that many times is fragile, many times is challenging, many times is full of sadness, but we walk empowered. We engage in the adventure to serve God with hope and joy. God's presence invites us to see and recognize the awaited Messiah, that is the good news also today. The family back in Jerusalem enjoys life. Jesus clothes himself with obedience, grows in body and wisdom, and gains favor with God and people. That brief explanation of Jesus' life sets up a model and foundation for life for in, as individuals and as a community. Because living in peace contributes to strengthening Jesus' relationship with his family and with the community that surrounds him. Living in harmony was necessary for people to come to understand and engage with Jesus' identity that was starting to be revealed. What does this mean for us today? Where is the good news for millions of persons scared and lost by the, the high rates of youth unemployment, the uprising of hate and division, the loss of families through wars, disasters, and the arrival of unexpected persons around the world that we call migrants? What does this mean for you today, or for people living in Jerusalem, Jordan, Lebanon, Palestine, and Syria? In the middle of the chaos, you and I, and people, can feel lost and scared. But the light shines, bringing again that experience that amazed many at the temple and let us know that Jesus is with us. Jesus' words are able to warm up our hearts and minds, even though we cannot understand it completely. God coming to mortals' hands is the hope renewed, setting up a new way to engage us to behave in a faithful way, as faithful community, as one that continues inspiring others to say, certainly, God is with us. Let us praise God with actions of justice, faith, and hope. Amen.